Hey there, <clears throat> good afternoon on this, uh, well, uh, um, wonderful Friday uh, afternoon slash evening here in Germany and whatever day and time it might be uh, wherever you are uh, currently watching this. Um, yeah, um, welcome to the 29th Octoprint on Air uh, broadcast, I think. I'm your host, Gina Heuske. There is no B in this name. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, long story short, um, I'll be talking to you about uh, the usual stuff today. So the outline is roughly, I'll tell you what I've been up to the past couple of weeks uh, since our last installment of this um, of this live stream, uh, what the next steps are going to be in my uh, yeah developing adventures of Octoprint. And then we'll have a quick look at the stats of the anonymous usage plugin before diving into the Q&A segment. And yeah, there were two questions in the backlog this time um, for the Q&A segment. So um, yeah, it's it, it will not take that much time. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm quite happy about that because I'm a bit under the weather today. So um, yeah, I, I will not be too sad if we don't fill up the whole hour. But yeah, let's see how things work out. Uh, for those of you watching this live right now, um, as usual, there will be a live chat on the right on the desktop uh, uh, YouTube client and on the bottom on mobile. And I'll also keep an eye on that. For me, it's in this corner over there on my screen. Um, in case there are any questions that you might be having, uh, so that I can then ask her the, uh, uh, answer them, uh, ask her the, yeah, of course, great English, uh, uh, answer them during the Q and A segment as well. Um, yeah, and that already brings me to the question of uh, what I've been up to. Uh, so first of all, those of you who watched the last installment know that uh, back then, back then, when in the mid of December twenty nineteen. Um, I was heading into my uh, yeah, really, really necessary uh, Christmas vacation uh, with uh, 3063, so the Chaos Communication Congress in Leipzig, right in the middle of it. And um, I want to yeah say thank you to everyone whom I met there and who shook hands and all that. And I, uh, as, as usual at these kinds of, ev of events, I had, a, I had an absolute blast. Uh, I spent a lot of time doing bar shifts <laughs> again with a, with a buddy of mine. And um, apart from that, I, I think I watched one talk <laughs> live or two and that was it. And I spent the whole rest of the event just tinkering around with stuff and, and, and taking a look at everything that was to see there and just um, hanging out uh, with friends and, and, and things and was really nice. And of course, as I said, uh, doing a, a, a ton of bar shifts, uh, which is like, yeah, it's kind of now my thing, I think, <laughs> giving back to the community this way. And it's also really fun. Yeah. Um, if you remember my scooter build experiments, like there, there's the scooter that I showed you about two, one or two episodes ago that I was setting up for 3063 in order to be able to cruise around the event because Leipzig Fair is kind of big. And if you're walking around the whole day, then yeah, your feet are kind of shot at the end of it. So I figured I'd try it with some wheels under myself. And of course, just wheels are, are boring. And so I installed some LEDs and some OLED display. And yeah, so that worked out great. Um, but of course, it, it wouldn't have been in a, a chaos event if it hadn't involved tinkering on the scooter while I was still there as well. Um, in the middle, I think on day two or something, I also had a problem with the power uh, uh, regulator. So I was standing in the merchandise queue waiting for my chance to pick up a shirt and a, and a hoodie and suddenly things smelled funny and I let out the magic smoke of the um yeah of the power regulator apparently and then and then i um headed into the hardware hacking, hacking area right after and ma managed to fix it in like yeah half an hour and that was really great um so yeah these kinds of events are a ton of fun and if you ever get a chance to attend one then i can really just recommend it if you are even remotely interested in tinkering in security in making in, uh, in in all kinds of hacking not not necessarily the kind of with with the people sitting in front of green screens and and trying to break into systems but more like taking things apart and figuring out how they work or such then yeah that would be the place uh, where you would feel right at home so yeah i i also plan on going to the um 
We had a 37th Chaos Communication Congress this year again, right after Christmas, and I hope that will work out because yeah, it's it's just so much fun. Anyhow, yeah, so that was that. Um, and uh, once I came back from 36C3, had recovered from the lack of sleep there and also the usual Congress flu that everyone seems to catch <laughs> at one time uh, uh, or another. Um, yeah, I got back to, back into working on uh, on 140 mostly. And of course, the usual madness of maintenance and support requests and all that. But yeah, the major focus has been on, on 140 and I released the, the fourth RC on January 28th and the fifth RC on February 11th. And I hope to be able to release the sixth one, which I also really, really hope will be the final one next week. And I originally had thought maybe to do it this week, but uh, yeah, I'll get to that later why I didn't. Um, yeah, what I also did was I already worked on some stuff that will go into 140. So some things that were reported in the in the meantime, uh, ever since getting out the first um, release candidate for 140, which turned out to not be regressions. So things that do not merit a fixed attempt in an RC because I would modify a code base that then could otherwise introduce bugs um, so yeah, I, I have this rule that if it's not a regression and if it's not really severe, uh, then I keep my hands off of it, even though it's a known bug and rather fix it in the next, uh, maintenance release, because otherwise you can just end in this whole, I don't know if you know this song, 99, 99 bottles on the wall. And, um, there's this, this programmer joke about it with like uh, 99 bucks on the wall, uh, on the bu 99 bucks on the wall, 99 bucks take one down, fix it, 102 bucks on the wall. So this is the reason why I usually um, only fix regressions and, and severe stuff that gets found uh, during the RC phase on the thing that is going to be the next stable version and then postpone the other stuff into the next maintenance release, which in this case will be one for one. And yeah, there were some, some minor things and some improvements that already went in there and um, yeah, so I, I took care of that. And as usual, of course, I drown, I was drowning in mails and in, in tickets when I, and, and also in, um, yeah, in, in things to catch up on, on the community forums, which are, by the way, really, really great running and, and really very well frequented and all that uh, after my vacation. And that also cost me like, I think two weeks this time. So yeah, that was fun. Anyhow, um, that was what I have been doing the past weeks. Now what I'm, what, what, uh, do I plan to do the next weeks? So, um, I already hinted at, uh, wanting to push out 140 RC6 next week. And, um, as I said, I was thinking about doing it this week already. And now I'm kind of glad I didn't. Um, the thing is that release candidates are really quite expensive to put together because it's not just take the current code base, zip it up and, uh, let people test it, but it's like I, ha I do this whole involved update testing uh, ver versus various versions of Octopi and um, checking uh, whether specific builds work and all that. So, and, and that and release can uh, um, uh, release node compiling and all that, all that takes time. So usually something like a release candidate costs me if it's a small change set compared to the other one, it costs me about half a day, but usually you can count more like a, a, a whole day just for a release candidate. So I always have to find this balance between um, pushing out fixes so that the fixes can be checked by uh, the release candidate testers um, as fast as possible versus limiting the amount of release candidates that are being done. And, um, so that is a bit, yeah, it's always a bit tricky. And in this specific case now, I, I have two fixes lined up for RC6 already. Um, and I, I kind of had, have the feeling that there might be something brewing <laughs> that someone else might stumble over th something more during the weekend. And this is why I decided, okay, I'm not going to push RC6 this week and then find on Monday, find, find a new ticket and go, mm, okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to use strong words now, but yeah, you can imagine. Um, and uh, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't push the, the RC6 this week, which is good because just today I got, um, I got a ping from uh, Chris 
and I, I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. I'm, I'm tempted to do it in German, but uh, it's not German. So, <clears throat> so by Chris Hirschab, Hirschab in, in German, but yeah, uh, on the on the feature uh, on the on the nah, on the feedback ticket that apparently, at least for him, the, the remember me functionality is still a bit wonky and not behaving like it should and he, that he constantly has to log in again. And I'm currently not able to reproduce that, but this is something that I really want to investigate first because I had to touch all this login stuff a lot in order to introduce the granular permission system, which is new in Octoprint 1.4.0. And there have been some issues with that over the past RC. so. When I read this comment, like my, my whole uh, alarm bells in my head rang, uh, uh, went off. So if any one of you seeing this right now, who is also running the RC test, could please report back into the, uh, in the, into the feedback ticket whether um, Remember Me functionality is working for you or not. So do you have to constantly log into the browser again or does it remember it that you were logged in, in after you closed the browser and reopen it and such? That would be very interesting to me. As I said, currently I cannot reproduce this problem myself, but that doesn't mean it isn't there. That can just mean that my use case is different. So yeah, the usual problems. And the reason why we even have a release candidates because yeah, I cannot reproduce every environment under the sun. And uh, yeah, we all know that. Anyhow, RC6 next week and then let's see how that works out so if, if there is nothing major major uh, reported in that then i will finally hopefully be able to push out the stable uh, one for oh and um and once that is out then i can finally get back to business as usual <laughs> which would be one for oh focus and also one five oh of course because then I can look into what will go into the next bigger release and uh, yeah, my current thoughts are to finally maybe look into uh, a new UI or something like that, but we will see. Uh, I'll have to go through the backlog and uh, figure out the priorities on that stuff again and uh, then, then I'll do some planning. So that's the current goal. And uh, I also still want to push, of course, push the new com layer out. And I'm hoping to be able to do this as part of a maintenance release, even though it's a bigger feature, but I really don't want to have that push back again for way too long because, yeah, you know how, how uh, those of you watching this uh, uh, regularly know how often I've talked about that thing and how, I, how, how much dread I feel every time that I have to look into the current communication layer and change things in there slightly in order to fix bugs or something. And yeah, I really want to get rid of that thing as soon as possible. <laughs> and yes. Okay. Um, so that was that. And what, what else are the next steps? So that is a very important next step. Um, I will be at uh, MRF this year. Uh, uh, so uh, from, from April, April 3rd until 5th, there's this huge rep rep community, 3D printing community event in Goshen, Indiana. And thanks to a sponsor, I will be there uh, in person. And that will be my first time getting off this continent at all. So, uh, uh, um, but uh, yeah, and obviously since it's the first time getting off, uh, getting out of Europe for me, it's also the first time for me to come stateside. So. Yay. <laughs> um, any, anyhow, if you're also there, that will be your chance to shake hands and get some swag because I'll obviously also try to pack some stickers and such. I'll have to, of course, take a look at my carry on weight and all that. But um, yeah, I don't think that this will be a problem. And uh, I'm really also looking forward to meeting some of you and also some good friends of mine who've also, who, who, who've who I've only been able to talk to online so far um, uh, in person. So this is uh, really exciting. Yeah. And I hope I will not, um, I will not uh, take the, take the jet lag too badly, but yeah, I will see. Um, okay. So that was the next steps. And now I promised you a quick look at the stats. So I'm going to switch you over to my right screen here. Okay, so uh, first things first, I can currently of this of this full dashboard here, I can currently only provide you with a, a view of the last seven days because 
yeah, I have to take a look at my queries uh, every time that I try to to load the, the 30 days uh, uh, view. The, apparently, there's so much data in there now that, uh, yeah, the, the, the tracking server just grinds to a halt and uh, everything times out and the, the, the uh, CPU usage spikes up to 100% for five minutes or so. And that's, that, of course, is not really optimal. And then I just get a broken dashboard anyhow because the requests time out. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so over the last seven days, uh, 51,000 instances roughly who altogether printed 66 years. I managed to get the values uh, of this for the last 30 days earlier. In the last 30 days, it was at like 70 instances that it saw unique instances and like 304 years printed in 30 days. So apparently you, you, you all are uh, quite the busy bees. Um, as usual, the, the printing, uh, no, no, not the printing hours, the instance uh, um, peaks, are, instant number peaks are over the weekend. So apparently some of you are also still shutting down your instances when they are not in use, which I find interesting because mine's, mine are always just running. Um, and I just shut down, uh, shut, shut off the printer when I don't need it. But anyhow, yeah, so printed hours per version over time, it's not, not that much interesting stuff to see there. Um, 1312 still sees, uh, well, not still, 1312 obviously sees uh, the most view uh, use. Um, 1311 is still quite active as well, as is 1310. People, update your instances. Jesus. Um, yeah, and we also see uh, the, the 140 RCs making an appearance here, and even some 1312 RCs that are still left over in the mix, which I find, uh, find kind of funny. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, that was that. So now the thing that is currently keeping me very happy, and this is the individual version statistics for anything that reports as 140RC whatever, because this is what makes me feel quite, yeah, how to say, quite confident about the quality of the release uh, candidate so far, because yeah, there is quite a number of you who are using it, even though only a small handful of those actually report back in the feedback tickets. And this this helps me sleep at night, I have to say. And also I find these graphs, these graphs really fun to to look at. So the first three uh, RCs, you can see here the, 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 the red one is RC1, orange one is RC2, green one is RC3. And those were still only released on the Devil RCs branch. And if you watched the last episode, then you know that I was wondering if I should or, or actually I was planning about putting the RC4 and further RCs out on the maintenance RC, RC branch instead of just the devil RC branch because I knew that yeah people there are more people subscribed to that and I needed more testers and as you can see in how the RC4 and RC5 usage peaked after release compared to the uh, compared to the three uh, two and one uh, that was a good decision on my part because the number of testers yeah, not doubled, but increased significantly. So um, all in all for RC1, I saw 123 instances, RC2 had 152 and um, RC3 only 298. And that only because it was out for almost two months during my um, during my vacation. And then my uh, backlog up catch my backlog up catching. No, my backlog catch up, whatever. You, you know what I mean, I hope. And um, and yeah, then RC3 came and basically reached the, the absolute peak of RC3, uh, sorry, RC4 came and reached the base, the, 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 the peak of RC3 within a really, really short time. So maintenance RCs are way more, uh, way more well used apparently as, 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 than the devil RCs, which I can expect, uh, understand. But if you feel confident, by the way, using devil RCs, um, during phases like that, so they don't see that much use. But um, you also get the maintenance RCs if you're subscribed to the Devil RC branch. So if you feel comfortable with that, um, because of course Devil RCs might be a bit more broken in the beginning than your regular run of the mill maintenance RC, then you can also just subscribe to that and you will get uh, notifications about stable releases, about maintenance RC releases, and about Devil RC releases. Whereas on the maintenance RC branch, you only get Devil and maintenance RC. So it's like the stacked approach. Yeah. Um, printed hours also look fairly nice, and um, especially down here overall. Um, yeah, RC3 saw the most number, of course, because, yeah, as I said, two months time, basically. No, not two months, but one. One? 
wait. Uh, one and a half. One and a half months, at, uh, roughly. Um, but uh, RC4 quickly caught up on that. So that is really good news for me. Um, and uh, yeah, there's also a good spread over the over the world and i'm still waiting for a little bubble to pop up in, in antarctica but yeah well okay so that was the individual version statistics and i know the plug-in authors among you uh might be interested in in this one because uh, with 1312 i introduced um tracking of installed plugins uh so every day every 12 24 hours octoprint will send a ping event and uh, no a pong event sorry a Pong event to the tracking server that includes a list of the plugins, including their uh, version numbers. And uh, this is what I'm using here for, for this dashboard. And uh, so Octolabs is still the the top one, uh, top number one um, uh, plugin with uh, almost 12k installs. And then the list goes on there. Uh, Bad level visualizer, navbar temp, Thingify, full screen, firmware update, and, and all that. And uh, this is only the top 20. And uh, if you scroll down here, go to the last page, then there are a lot of plugins, which apparently people just, oh, there it is again. I have to censor this again. <laughs> um, yeah, that uh, just just some small things that apparently are only in use on one or two or, or less um, instances, which probably are not registered in the in the or not registered anymore in the plugin repository. And I find it kind of interesting to see this. Um, yeah. Anyhow, so this is the long tail. And before you wonder, yes, I still want to make all this data public in some way or the other. Not this particular dashboard uh, instance, uh, this Grafana instance itself, because it has access to the raw data, but I want to compile charts and stuff out of that. Just, yeah, you know the usual problem uh, with my time and things, other things taking higher priority. So, yeah, there was that. Um, Okay, so that was the quick look at the stats. And now let me quickly, uh, look. there's the button. Change back to the webcam and just take a look at the, at the live chat. Yeah, because we are now entering the QA segment. Anyhow, before I go to the questions that I've prepared, I'll just quickly answer some from the live chat here. So Chris asks, um, what plugins do you personally use personally use uh, on your uh, own Octoprint instances when you're printing? So um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, let me check. <laughs> um, I know that uh, I recently put a, a Tasmota plug on, on one of my printers, and so I'm using the, the Tasmota plug-in. And what else do we have here? Um, the bad visualizer, the cost plugin, uh, which I find kind of informative to just get a hint of uh, how much a print would cost me given my current filament prices that I have. A firmware updater plugin, MQTT, um, and Touch UI. And that's about it. Yeah. So I actually don't use that many plugins. I just realized. Um, I I often try stuff, but then just yeah. I the thing is the the quite sad thing actually. Um, I write Octoprint, yeah. I rarely print compared to uh, considering that my day job consists of writing a software for three D printers. I actually print not that much. I uh, I have recently started on working on some stuff, so I'm. Uh, yeah, I've, I've printed a toy pistol for myself, uh, for, um, yeah, the Mass Effect, Carnifex, if you're interested, uh, from my mini factory, which I intend to make really, really fun and, and shiny and like a prop, turn into a proper prop. And um, uh, some functional prints here and there, but yeah, mostly it's just calibration cubes to quickly check the com layer or maybe something like, yeah, I've stuff like this, this, I once use, uh, I once found, um, 
a really nice because and and really round and 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 with lots of curves a, a model of uh, Churi like this asteroid that we landed Rosetta and Philae on back in 20s. 16 or 17 and i've been using that uh, when i have to do some performance tests of the of the of the of the, of the uh, com layer because of the curves of the whole thing because it's really bumpy and yeah so that's that's helpful for that that and also um yeah as as kind of embarrassing as it is to say i also still have a fidget spinner uh, a g code file lying around for that because of the round shapes in that that also really help with the, all the small segments help to uh, benchmark whether things still f still sound okay you know like if it's too slow you hear it and um yeah that is that be between that and actually measuring stuff that that is the stuff that i print and yeah otherwise i don't print that much um but i'm working on on improving things mm -hmm. um matt asked uh, which plugin is this for the logging uh yeah, on, it depends a bit. Uh, on on the current stable releases, there's still this bundle lock in pl uh, this bundle plugin called Force Force Lock In or Forced Lock In. I always confuse myself whether I put a D in there or not. Um, anyhow, that's the one, and it also has an extension point in order to stylize it uh, via plugin, so to inject custom G uh, CSS uh, uh, into it. Uh, but I, I I'm not aware of anyone actually using that. But yeah, it's in there. Uh, and I think I also documented it under docs.octoprint.org, but I might be mistaken. Um, yeah, and uh, under 140, it's no longer a plugin, but it's a built-in um, a built-in login screen. And I just realized. Let me quickly jot that down because I think I need to take a look at uh, at the theme extension points for that because. Uh, yeah, that was an addition actually uh, returning that into into the RC uh, during RC th between RC three and four, I think, because of issues observed with uh, with some endpoint protections under the new granular permission system. So yeah, uh, I'll have to take a look at that. Sorry. Um, so okay, uh, to do created and. Um, Oh, also thank you for everyone who just tested whether the remember me function for works for them under RC5. That's a good. Thanks, Jim, and thanks, Power Weasel. Um, also, yes, Matt, if you bring your 3D printer or your recipe and also something like a Sharpie, I will happily sign it at birth. <laughs> um, and uh, Matt also asked if I use Octolabs. Funnily enough, I don't. Um, I, I have been meaning to, and I'm also good friends with Brad, who's who, the author, and I'm actually I'm actually staying at his place during Murph, or, or rather before and after Murph. So yeah, um, I really should probably, but I simply haven't yet been. Yeah, I, I haven't found the the time to actually try my hand at it and setting it up and all that. And I mean, the sad thing is I don't even use my built-in time-lapse functionality on my actual productive printers because, yeah, I just fire a print job off and then that's it for me. I don't create time-lapses currently. So the use case just is not there for me, but I absolutely, absolutely love his work So, uh, and, and what he did there. And also, I, I just love uh, the brainstorming sessions we sometimes engage in on... Uh, yeah, on 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 yeah, on adding stuff into Octoprint that will allow other plugins to uh, to do awesome stuff, but also uh, help Octolabs with one thing or another. So, for example, um, the um, yeah, there's this there's this possibility of a plugin to put the print job on hold, so to speak, uh, with a context manager in in Python. And that that is something that um, yeah found its way into the core thanks to one of these brainstorming sessions. That was kind of fun and hard to debug. But in the end, I got it to work and uh, it's been working great. And uh, yeah. OK, uh, I think that was everything from the chat backlog currently. So let's jump over here. Is this the right one? I think this is the right one. That looks like the right one. OK, yeah. So to the um, to the prepared uh, questions from the Q&A sheet uh, or Q&A form or however you want to call it. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, Timor asked, uh, i like to know more about the transition to Python 3, including what incentive or support will be given to plugin developers to update their code to Python 3. So, uh, yeah, first of all, um, I'm currently looking into uh, publishing a blog post, a blog post, sorry, um, yeah, to give plugin authors a bit of a list of best practices to follow for their own migration uh, tasks. Uh, to, to go from works under Python 2 to works under Python 2 and 3, ideally, um, based on the experience of migrations that already happened, so of, of, yeah, of, of plug-in authors who already went through the work, so to speak, because my view is currently uh, mostly limited on core changes, and um, yeah, that's that's a bit different maybe than, than what, what your regularly run-of-the-mill problem with a plug-in might be. So yeah, I'm looking for input from the community on that. And I also saw that there has already been some stuff added in there and I'll have to look into actually writing that blog post. But first, RC... Uh, six? Six. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, regarding the incentive. So... Uh, and, I mean, it's not like there are not that many goodies or something like that that plugin authors can expect for switching to Python 3, but it's like at one point Octoprint will stop working uh, with Python 2 altogether and the current, the current time frame is something like a year. Python 2 has been end of life now since uh, January 1st, but I figured, well, okay, I'll, I'll give things another year. Um, and probably like a year from the release of 1.4.0, not a not a year from January 1st. So don't worry about me taking so long to get stuff ready and stable. Um, that will not work against anyone who's who's a plugin author with regards to time. Um, and uh, yeah, once Octoprint stops supporting Python 2 and uh, we also switch Octopi over to a Python 3 and all that, uh, yeah, all plugins that are currently not Python 3 compatible will not work with Octoprint anymore. And yeah, that's probably going to mean that some of the plugins who are not actually longer maintained these days will cease to function. But I'm hoping that if they actually are being used and that people actually rely and love them and uh, rely on them and love them and want them to work again, that someone will step up and uh, take care of this. Um, same goes for my plugins, which I've, uh, yeah, basically, um, uh, yeah, abandoned is not the right word because I've put them up for adoption and uh, I'm still waiting for someone to take up the reins on some of them. So, for example, a push pull plugin is something that I myself no longer even use and which I also find myself uh, not don't find myself in a position to actively maintain. And uh, so I put a call for adoption out like one and a half years ago, two years ago, I don't know. But so far, no one has stepped up, so apparently it's not being used that much. Actually, I could look into the graph, <laughs> uh, into the stats, if it's actually even installed somewhere. Hmm. Wait. <laughs> can I sort here? Yeah, I can. That's nifty. Okay, so now we have to find P. Oh, no, we have to find O because the identifier is actually Octobullet. Octo... Octobullet. Oh, actually 735 installs. Well, one of them, if any one of you 735 uh, uh, people who have, uh, or not people, it's, that's an instance count, but if any one of you only one of these 735 instances who is still using Octobullet with, um, or the push bullet plugin with Octobullet 1312 apparently, would be happy to maybe adopt it, that would be great. That would help me a lot and yeah, so. But it needs to be ported to Python 3. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, uh, so that was that. Um, yeah, anyhow, so I'm, I'm not really happy of having to basically say uh, to plug-in authors, well, now jump through the hoops and port to Python 3, but my hands are kind of bound. I cannot uh, just I cannot do this like automatically or anything like this because there are just there's there, there are just some fundamental backwards compatibility issues between Python 2 and Python 3 so it's impossible to um do this programmatically from something like Octoprint that loads lo loads your plugin for you it just needs to be done uh 
And yeah. The good news is that once Py uh, once we are all on Python 3 and all of us abandon Python 2 support, there are some really nifty new uh, language features in Python 3 um, that we then will be able to use. Like there are new format strings and there is there, there is this whole async IO stuff in there, which I hope to be able to uh, utilize for, for the whole uh, network stack and also maybe the com layer. Um, yeah, and stuff like this. So that looks really exciting. And uh, so far, I've just every time that I read up on this stuff, it was like, hmm, yeah, well, I would love to use that, but I can't. <clears throat> and yeah, now it's a bit bit closer to my grasp. Um, yeah, so that and, and with regards to support, I mean, obviously, uh, anyone who runs into issues during trying to add Python 3 support to their plugin is, is absolutely welcome to um yeah to 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 open a, a topic or to just yeah to 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 get in touch on the community forums because this is actually the place where i try that i also try to establish not only as a hub for the for the end users who need help with with their setups and all that but also for the developers who uh, for the plugin developers who need maybe some hints as to where to find some stuff or as to how to um go about implementing a certain workflow or something, which interfaces they might be uh, 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 required to use for this. And um, there are also some very, um, yeah, uh, some very experienced plugin developers on there that uh, can help you as well. So not just me, um, which is really great. Um, and uh, yeah, so please just get in touch on there and uh, I, I and I think also everyone else uh, who can will be happy to lend a helping hand and try to work through the stuff. So um, I think I can I can speak for all of us who've already done a Python 2 to Python 3 migra migration that, yeah, we, we are not really happy about that. And yes, it sucks, but um, we are there for each other. <laughs> If push comes to Jeff, just to rant about things, but yeah. Um, okay, that was that question. I hope it's sufficiently answered. Uh, and uh, another one by Timo as well. Uh, I'd like to know if you have any plans to make it easier to support multiple webcams. Um, yeah, well, I can't say that I explicitly have them. Uh, because so far that has not really been very high on my priority list, to be honest. Um, I don't uh, have the feeling, but I don't have any stats to back up that feeling. But just based on what I see with regards to support requests and all that um, on the forum, um, I don't get the impression that multiple webcams are something that are like this huge, oh my God, we need this ASAP kind of thing for people. Um, so what I what I definitely do not plan to do is put this in as a core feature. But I would what I would uh, yeah I could myself being talked into basically is uh, yeah adding some extension points for for plugins so that they can do that if so that they yeah so basic so that just the the whole webcam stuff is somehow pluggable. Um, but. Um, yeah, I think that's something that might actually merit some discussion on the forum uh, if if, the, if there is a need for this and all that. Um, um, and I currently at least do not have a really good idea on how to go about that. But uh, as I said, if there is sufficient demand, I'd certainly be willing to look into it uh, to open this part of Octoprint up for extension so that people can more easily um, uh, do whatever they want to do with their webcam stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay, now let me take a look at the... Ah, to that point, Power Weasel asks, isn't there a multiple webcam plugin which you could search in the stats? That's a good point, actually. Um, dum -dum. Wasn't it even called multi-cam view? Well, I mean... Oh, and there's also multi-cam, which has 2K. Uh, so which one was which again? Do -do 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 -do. So that one is the one which allows you to switch. I 
And that is the one, the multi cam, which has the 2K installs, right? Yeah. 2K among, what was it, 70K? So, yeah, hmm. It's not that huge of a crowd, but it's it's a party. A multicam view, I think. No, what was it? What was it called again? Multicam view. Apparently, that is not even registered. So, whatever that is, it's a privately owned plugin that no one has bothered to share. But yeah, so 2K in a sea of installs. Um. Like. Uh, I cannot, I cannot calculate apparently. Let me quickly, um, totally do. So what did I, did I say? Something like 70,000 instances. And we have, yeah, and we have two of them. No, the other way around. So like 3% maybe. 3% of the whole user base use this plugin, which doesn't necessarily mean that they actually have multiple plugins and multiple camps, um, configured but yeah i mean as i said uh get in touch on the on the on the forum um might be interesting to see also i would like to know where the problem is with the current uh multi webcam plugin because apparently it's not so easy or maybe timor just didn't find the plugin that could also be uh, possible of course yeah, so there's a plugin, by the way, uh, which I also forgot about. Sorry, um, I I try to remember other plugins that are registered, but um, yeah, they are they are quite a number now. Um, Matt says maybe they meant uh, camera switching or having different cameras displaying on the same screen. So I think the multicam plugin allows you to switch on the fly. So it adds little buttons, and you can just um, quickly switch them didn't i actually yeah like yeah you just get these buttons here apparently <laughs> um mm, to show different times as well as the ability to more than one stream at a time so maybe i don't know maybe they are working on that and um uh, but yeah, I'm just going to link to that from the from the show notes later on then when I put up the recording so that uh, people will be able to find that. <laughs> just in case uh, um, Timur wasn't aware of this plugin. Uh, also, if I don't know how this works, it's probably just messing around with the JS so that might get some weird breakage here and there if I ever need to change anything about how the webcam is um, plugged into plugged into the, the 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 web interface because it's a bit yeah due to caching of of browsers and all that that's yeah the, there's a bit of magic going on in there and um might be that that's, this has caused issues in the past but i'm not aware of them so if you want to run multiple cams with octoprint and this plugin is for some reason not working for you for whatever reason and you think that it could be make made to work better or the whole situation could be improved by uh, including some kind of extension points in Octoprint, then please get in touch on the forums and otherwise, well, use the plugin. Um, yeah. Uh, and that lets me take a look over to the... Yeah, I think we don't have any questions left over to answer. Also, sorry, in case you can hear, hear the church bells, um, they can be a bit loud and they are ringing in the weekend apparently uh yeah great it's especially great if i'm on the balcony which is like you i can see the church tower from there and yeah talking to people right next to you gets tricky in these cases when when they get off well anyhow yeah um back to me back to me back to me back to me yeah so um so considering that we are now through the backlog of uh, of uh, Q and A in the spreadsheet, and <clears throat> I need to drink something, <laughs> and of course I don't have anything here. Great planning on my part again. And um, yeah, I guess I'll just wrap this up then for now. Um, 
so um, yeah the next installment of this broadcast will be uh, at the end of March probably considering that we, um, yeah something between like in a month um, definitely I'll try definitely to do it before um, before Murph um, because then I can also remind everyone who's attending to do that uh, that I'll be there uh, again in the next one um, quick jump back into the live questions Matt asks can I make a raspy link to an Arduino well if you are using a 3d printer uh, you you usually pretty much doing that already though I do not do not know what you mean with uh, with uh, linking specifically but like you can connect them and then talk to them and yeah that's not a problem um, yeah and uh, sorry again for the delay in uh, getting this um, current broadcast so episode 29 scheduled and uh, uh, recorded and all that um, yeah as you as you can imagine it took a took or, or as you know it took me a while to get back on top of things and then with our season all that taking precedence I simply could not I simply could not find a good spot before today <laughs> um, ha has all been a bit nuts but in a good way um, yeah uh, I will post the appointment of the next one as usual uh, on patreon and um, I will also see that I put the recording of this one up next week. Uh, but yeah, once RC6 is out, I can look into stuff like that, not before. Um, yeah, and uh, until until then, in any case, um, thanks, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, I hope it was interesting to you and um, that we'll see each other again. And until then, I yeah, all that's left to say is happy printing. Bye.